Hey, what's up? It's Chris here from Chris's Sci-Fi Reactions. Today we're back with another classic Who. This is the ARC Part 4. If you want um, a full uncut and edited reaction, you can head over to Patreon and get up to the Power of the Daleks Part 2, I believe. Uh, it's either Part 2 or Part 3. Uh, yeah, I'm just wanting to get this uh, episode done because I'd like to go and watch uh, the SANFL, that's South Australian National Football League, um, preliminary finals. Uh, my team is basically in there. Uh, when I say football, I mean Australian football, not soccer. Uh, I'm not really a fan of soccer. Uh, my dad was. He was a Liverpool fan. But I'm really not. Um, so yeah, it would be the first time my team's been in the grand final, like, since the 60s. So, yeah, I don't think there's much else to be said. Uh, really getting on with this classic Who. I know there are obviously seven Doctors. Uh, a long, long time. And at the current pace, I might be finished in a few years. <laughs> if I'm lucky. Oh, though, I'm not sure, calling it lucky, then I'd be out of uh, Classic Who episodes, but... Yeah, without further ado, let's just get straight on into this episode. Last episode of this story, which has been, um... Okay, the first two parts were good, the last episode I think was just average. But let's see how this wraps up. Let's go. Stay here, hmm? I'm not sure I would want to stay there. You know, the, there are only invisible beings, I guess. It's still what company. Why does Two no longer give us his report? I don't know. It could mean a simple break in communications, <clears throat> or that he was attacked. But his report of conditions on the planet refute wisdom of your leadership. <laughs> don't worry. At the slightest sign of opposition, we can easily get rid of him. As easily as we will this spaceship once we have left it. They're more like Remember humans than they know. The final answer, which is locked in the Backstabbing head. Backstabbing their own kind. Doctor, we are, as you know, concerned about the arrival of the Ark and what it will mean to this planet. Yes, yes, I can quite understand that. That is why you destroyed the launcher. Hmm? Here, we've always known peace, never war or conflict. Oh, they not the killed the monoid, the though. Guardians. You know, the humans that, that was pretty cold. The they have used to have your ideas, too. Yes, that's true, my dear, but uh, you mustn't think they were perfect. Oh, no. Sometimes they were... Ex Be careful. Remember, each tray contains a thousand monoids, thoughtfully preserved as microcells by your ancestors. They must reach their new life on Refusus safely. Everything is proceeding according to plan one. We must have... The monoids should just leave the ship to the humans, and the humans could go to another planet. Stupid, thrusting creature. He and all the other subject guardians are still under the illusion that they will be coming with us to refuse this. They are a blind people. They deserve their fate. Yes. What? Ever, we haven't much time. What first? Oh, we agreed. First, we've got to find that bomb that the monoids left behind. The moment we land, then we decide whether one is to stay our leader. If Refusus is dangerous, we must return to the Ark before it is destroyed. I do get both positions, though. There is still no contact from two on Refusus one. 
Never mind that. You know, they, they, they do have a bit of a political city. system and Give both are right. Uh, yeah. You can see the screen holding him up. That's funny. Still, the background does look pretty good, considering. I don't think I saw the stream when the Doctor and uh, Dodo went down, though. Stephen was right. Maybe the it was gone. just the camera view. Just find that bomb. We've got to find a way of getting back to refuses. Could you land the Ark? Or is the Ark just too big? Was it like made in space maybe? Very much like the Star Trek. Ships made in space rather than landing on a planet. Minus maybe Voyager. Come. We must not let one of the others get out of our sight. could be anywhere. In the corridors, in the jungle over there, in the cultivated lands. We'll find it. We must. What's that? It does look like a pretty good ship. One of the launches trying to make contact. We are in contact. Who is that? This is Refucius. Contacting spaceship Earth. The problem is quite simple. Very well. We will do as you suggest. Thank you. Why would the monoids tell them, though? And why would the Doctor think that... Oh, maybe he's ah, confident so in his ability to manipulate them. <laughs> Don't kill them. One will want to question them. You will come with us. Delighted. Delighted. <laughs> Love the confidence of the Doctor. <laughs> That one says 63, so there are obviously quite a few. Who is it that travels in that launcher? We have... Do you seek to challenge me for? You have led us to this planet and placed us all in danger. If that is the way you feel, then return to the Ark. We will. Only there we have to face the danger that you created. <laughs> the fission device. <laughs> Leaving you with but one problem that of getting rid of it. But since it is inside the statue, and the statue itself is so heavy, I think that you will find the problem of disposal is not so easy. Voyage to space in the first place, 700 years ago. But we're alive. Why should any of us die for an idea that they thought of? You served too long with the monoids, Naharis. You no longer belong to us. Let him go with the landing party. Yeah, he's, he's become... Yeah, that's all right. Yes, sir. Brainwashed, I suppose. He's... And you too. Contact the doctor as soon as you can. I'll stay here. His drive or his motivation is simply the to serve the monoids. Right. Same species fighting each other over political power and decisions. What is the meaning of this? We are going back to the Ark. That is now against my orders. Your orders. You have given too many. And delivered them on one. You don't agree with me, so I'm going to kill you. Mahanis, where are you going? Out. Better make sure everything's all right first. Jeez. Ah. 
Is that number one? So the refusions, despite being our size, are very strong, very powerful. Size, just perfect size airlock. Do you think you'll be able to get everything down onto Refusis now? We'll manage. Especially if the Refusians help us. We'll do everything we can to assist understanding as well as hope. You know I once said that to one of your ancestors a well, long th time that ago. That is so true. <laughs> However, we need to understand goodbye. others, goodbye. that's for sure, and head into the future with hope. Despite the way the world is right now, that doesn't look very likely, but... I do like that it was a human that took him back to the TARDIS this time. Landing now, Doctor. Good. That means the gravitational bearing must have rectified itself. Oh, it's nice seeing hey, Stephen pilot the TARDIS. You know, instead of just the Doctor. Yes. Hmm. Very nice. Bless you. Oh, Doctor, don't say you're catching a cold. <laughs> doctor, you vanished. What? Oh, nonsense, child. Nonsense. <laughs> you gone have. invisible. Do you think this is something to do with the refusions? Well, it must be. You're wrong. This is something far more serious. We're in grave danger. This is some form of attack. Mm, okay. The Celestial Toy Room. Okay, so I know the next story is the Celestial Toy Maker, which is doesn't currently exist. I will be reacting to the fourth part of the Celestial to Toy Maker. Um, yeah, so if you're watching this episode on YouTube, you'll be able to head over to Patreon and I will make the fourth episode of the Celestial Toy Maker free if you wish to watch that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think there's much to talk about. On that before we break down um yeah so if you're watching this on youtube in the top right hand corner i'll leave a link to a video that tells you how to access uh the free uh, patreon uh, section without logging in or uh, however you choose to do it that's that's up to you but yes, you'll be able to see that part for, for free. Yeah, so the next story that I'll be watching really is the gunfighters. That will be the four part. But talking about this episode, or story as a whole, the arc, very good. I think the first two episodes were my favourite. The third one I do feel slowed down a little bit. But the fourth one I feel picked up. And this looked very much... At an eye for an eye, I feel. You know, like, you brought the virus to us. We're going to execute you. Uh, because the monoids and our people are getting very sick and maybe even dying. So, yeah, th this really did look at seeing things in a 
you do something to hurt me, I'm going to do something to hurt you. And I also feel that's the case with the monoids that we saw. Oh, the humans treated them like second class citizens, so we're going to treat you like slaves. So it all came very de much down to, you do this to me, I'm going to do it back to you. An eye for an eye. Uh, which isn't necessarily the right thing to do. There are exceptions, of course, but generally speaking, an eye for an eye is not a good thing. Um, what else? I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Uh, the monoids fighting each other. That was very much... The mono monoids have a lot of human characteristics. They may want to see themselves as, you know, completely different to humans, but really they are very similar. Um, yeah, if I was going to give this... Um, I think I'll give it an 8. I think it's deserving of an 8. But yeah, I shall break it down. Okay, so we start off here. They're curious about what happened to the uh, monoid that was going down to the planet. Not sure what happened to him. Uh, the monoids, or at least number one, decided to go down to the planet anyway, that they're going to start the migration process. Uh, three notices that four is, excuse me, is uh, sort of doubting one's orders. Um, then we have them point towards the bomb, that the bomb is in the head of the statue. Here we have the Doctor talking to the Refusion, sort of about the whole idea that the Guardians weren't perfect. You know, Dodo portrayed them as really nice, really peaceful, and respectful of all life. But the Doctor sort of pointed out that, you know, they were very arrogant, and they did treat the Monoids like second-class citizens. You know, and the Doctor is right. The Dodo, Dodo is right um, about them being peaceful, but you also do have that element of them that had the Monoids as second-class citizens. Is there any wonder why they sort of rebelled? Um... Basically, they're talking about planning on breaking out of that kitchen. Uh, one and three are discussing going down to the planet. Then this guy, they tricked this guy, who's very much brainwashed. And one of the people escapes and breaks the others out. Uh... They finally leave the monoids, heading towards that planet, Refucius. And they land there, notice why, uh, the report, what happened. They say he was attacked, but you could also uh, sort of assume that maybe something went wrong with the fuel line. A number of different issues could have happened. Maybe they're so confident in the technology that that's impossible in their eyes. Okay, then the Doctor contacts uh, Stephen and the Ark, talking about the bomb. He said he'll send the landers back up. Uh, then, basically, the Doctor is caught by the monoids talking to him saying he hasn't seen anyone, which is technically true. Uh, this is where we start to get the um, monoid division really noticeable, and they go back to the Ark. Uh, some of the Guardians go down to Refucius. Um, the monoids start fighting each other using weapons instead of words. Seems to be the way it is. 
This guy is then killed by one of the monoids. He's just brainwashed to the point where his only motivation is to his only motive in life is to serve the monoids. Uh, the doctor tells him that they found the bomb. Um, then uh, number four just puts down his weapon, which is good. Uh, they realize that it's in the statue. The Refusion is then able to move it out of the uh, convenient size of the airlock. Um, then the Refusion said they cannot land on that planet unless they make peace with the Monoids. And, yeah, it, it, it's really nice. And, you know, it, it's a fact. You need to make peace. We weapons, it's just... You can't, ultimately, in the end. You know, using weapons, killing each other, it's just pointless. You know, even if diplomacy talking takes years, it, it's better than the alternative. Which leads to just death. And then they leave, and the Guardians record uh, their departure. And, yeah, the Doctor becomes invisible in the TARDIS. We also saw Stephen controlling the TARDIS, which was a nice change from the Doctor. Okay, so that was my breakdown of the ARC Part 4. A generally good story. I'm looking forward to checking out the final part of the Celestial Toymaker. Yeah... I don't think there's much more. The Celestial Torn Maker Part 4 will be free over on Patreon. Yeah, also my social media accounts are listed in the description below if you wish to follow me over there. And yeah, I think that's all for now. Uh, if you enjoyed this reaction, don't forget to give it a like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.